Sports fans to a special main event edition of the Party of One podcast, the Tri-State Sport Regulatory Commission's top-rated two-player role-playing game podcast. I am your lead anchor, as always, Jeff Stormer, coming to you live from the Party of One commentary booth. Sports fans, this week's title match is a doozy as the duet kid Jeff Stormer takes on host of the Inside the Master Studio podcast, Da Moon Rules, in a one-on-one game of Contenders by J.J. Price. <laughs> That's right, Contenders, a role-playing game of blood and sweat, pain and hope, of two boxes rising through the ranks that try to become the king of the ring, the cock of the walk. It's a great role-playing game, and I think you're going to love it, sports fans. Before we dive in, a special thank you to our sponsors at the Party of One Patreon. That's right, special event episodes like these are brought to you by the Party of One Patreon as a stretch goal. As long as the Patreon saves above $25 a month, you'll get a special bonus episode every single month. Patreon backers get access to behind-the-scenes design docs, prep materials, they get to pick the games for the show, and more. Find out more information at patreon.com slash podcast. So without any further ado, let's throw it over to Jeff Stormer in the past so that he can get started with this one-on-one, once-in-a-lifetime battle. Take it past me. Ring the bell! <laughs> thanks, future me. This week I am sitting down with the Moon Rules. The Moon Rules, thanks for coming on Party of One. It's a pleasure to be here. So up top, why don't you talk about anything that you've got going on, introduce yourself to the listeners at home, talk about any projects you might want them to know about, such as any really neat interview podcasts that you might be a part of. Well, it's funny you should mention that. Uh, I actually have a podcast on the Audio Entropy Network. It's called Inside the Master's Studio. Uh, I happen to have a a great guest you may have heard of, uh, Jeff Stormer. Ah, he's overrated. Well, I mean, his wrestling stuff's pretty funny. That's fair. Uh, But it is a look into the art of GMing, and it is a blatant ripoff of another show that I will not be named. Out of fear (laughs) of reprisal. (laughs) Oh, that makes me laugh. Um, So this week we are playing Contenders. It is a game about the sweet science. It is a game about the squared circle. It is a role-playing game of blood, uh, Blood, Sweat, Pain, and Hope by J.J. Prince. And I am tremendously excited about it. I'm really looking forward to punching you in the face. I get that a lot. You'd be surprised. Let's talk a little bit about where, where, when and where our game is taking place, and then we will introduce our contenders. Well, having watched Creed for about the 50th time, I went ahead and decided I wanted to do Philly. I... I mean, I'm not going to, I'm never going to argue against doing something, setting something in Philly. And of course, being a fan of old timey radio, I wanted to do it around the 30s. Yeah, so we settled on like 1933, 34-ish. Um, the Philadelphia mob family has just been sort of united under one person, right? Is that, is that what it is? Uh, no, this would be about year two or three of the war for control. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so... Sabatella, right? Yes. Yeah. So Sabatella is dead. It is about 1933-34, and there's been a schism in the Philadelphia mob family for about two years now. And at least in the the world of this contenders game, a lot of that is happening through, like, organized sports betting. That's where a lot of their money is coming in. Which I can't imagine is not accurate to the real world, but it's accurate to the story, and that's what matters. I mean, uh, narcotics, illegal gambling, loan sharking, and extortion activities, so yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. Yeah, so we are going to be playing boxers um, that are sort of, oh, this is happening kind of around the boxing matches that we're going to be playing out. I don't know how much that's going to inform things, but it's important to keep that in the air. So why don't you introduce your boxer this week? So my boxer is Jack Dudley also known as Jack Hammer Dudley. He was a construction worker in the late 20s, and then the troubles started. Market crashed. uh, Things in Philadelphia went from bad to worse. So he got laid off, and somehow he found his way into the mob. Mm. Not too deep, 
He's just a uh, source of income. Gives him a way to get his aggression out, and it gives them a way to make money. Sure. So it benefits everybody, really, when you get in, when you get down to it. Right. Win, win, win. So I am playing Hubert the Throwback Styles. I, uh, they call me the Throwback because I am a throwback to a more civilized era of martial sport. I am from New York City. Uh, my family is the Styles family. You may have heard of us. You know, um, I am. I was uh, raised at Yale. I was the president of the Yale Boxing uh, Pugilist Society. I am not affiliated with the mob because, quite frankly, I don't need to be. I'm that good. Uh, I've got a little bit of a reputation. I'm a little bit. Uh, I'm a little bit of a name, but in a sense that people kind of want to take me out, so to speak. I've got just enough of a name where people think that think that beating me up will be a good idea. And my family, the Siles family, you may have heard of us. We're doing very well. Uh, you know, I'm not supposed to say too much because, you know, insider trading and all, but I'm doing very well. Uh, sure, the market has been not ideal, but uh, we're certainly not going to let that affect our lifestyle. So here I am trying to drum up a little extra money, a little extra prestige, and perhaps reinvigorate my family's love of the combat sport. And I'm pretty excited because they want to keep me strong to box, so I'm back to three meals a day. Well, that's pretty great. I mean, three meals a day is where it's at. Yeah, and there's meat for two of them. Oof. Well, dang. My cup runneth over. J.D. Rockefeller over here with his meat. <laughs> All right. So, let's dive into the game. Uh, do you want to go first as setting a scene for your contender, or should I? I'll let you go ahead. Okay. Uh, each player in turn gets to set a scene for their contender. This can be done in any order. The active spotlight terror player can narrate other contenders into their scene if they wish. We choose who should play each NPC. I I think I would like to do a connection. Maybe we will both do a connection or one of the other scenes, and then we'll do promotion scenes, and then we'll dive into our big fight. All right. So would you like to play your Quincy Styles? As we have a phone call in which Quincy Styles updates young Hubert on the status of the family. Certainly. Great. So I think the scenario is. Uh, Hubert has been training for a while. Maybe he missed some family holiday because he's been here, like, training in the gym in one of these dirty, dingy, Philly boxing gyms. And I think he's getting a phone call which with a little bit of desperation from Quincy Styles. So he picks up the phone. Ah, oh, Father, it's a pleasure to hear from you. How is everything at the fam... Did I miss... Oh, I missed Grandma's birthday, didn't I? Yes, and you know she doesn't have very many of those left. Yes, well, I figured, you know, what better gift they give her than pride in her grandson. And I can't do that if I don't train. I can think of a few better ones. Uh, how about a nice masthead for a yacht? Oh, you and your yacht, you and your yacht. You and your ethereal concerns. Oh, you say that like you weren't in the same position I was when you were my age. When I was your age, I was knee-deep in stocks. You're uh, knee-deep in blood and spit and God knows what. Oh, yes, the Great War. Yes, yes. I mean, thankfully, we'll never have another one of those, so it's fine. Yes, we've certainly learned our lesson. Oh, these chuckles got rough. <laughs> um, so, uh, the... Is there something that else that you need, or are you just calling to shame me about missing missing a birthday? Uh, no, no, there is business, not just pleasure. Pleasure for whom? But yes, yes, continue the business. What is, how is, how is business looking? Is everything, is, have things rebounded? Well, I wouldn't say rebound. Uh, there's a bit of life left in the old girl. Uh. I I had to downgrade some things. Uh, you're you're frightening me a little bit, but continue. But the next quarter is looking very promising. We should be out of this small hiccup in the market any day now. 
How far behind are we on the boat? Well, the boat's a couple hundred miles away now. They repoed the boat. You let them repo the boat. I tied your mother to it, but she wasn't heavy enough to keep it in one spot. <laughs> well, that that surprises me, I'll tell you that much. <sighs> okay. You know, if you were here, you could have driven off those hooligans. I'm not going to... I'm not going to drive off bank-affiliated repo agents, Father. That's their job, just the same as... Okay, listen, Father, what if I... What if I told you I had a fight coming up that had a lot of money riding on it? How much is a lot of money? A couple, uh, two grand or so for the winner. Two hundred for the loser. Enough. That two grand, we should be able to, that should put us at least even with the bank, right? We can't be that far behind. I don't know why you would even bother mentioning the loser's purse. I... You're right. I, you're right. That is that is loser talk, and we are not losers in this family. So That's I tell right. you, when I get this, I w what I would like you to do, mail me. Uh, have have Wooster write down any write down all of the the bank totals that we need. Mail it to me, and I will take a look at my finances after the match, and I'll see what I'll, I will send whatever winnings we need over, and we will get the boat back. And then, Christmas at sea. Yes, here's hoping. I'll have Wooster begin right away. Uh, what's the time frame for this? It may be a while. Um, I think like 30, so they've got at least, like, telegrams and, <laughs> ma like, regulated mail, I think. We'll see if there's a cheap option. That's fair. Um, okay, yeah, so... I think that's the end of the scene, is I think Christmas at sea. And it kind of pa fades away to, like, a dream shot of him water skiing on the back of this yacht. And it's like, it's fun. It's Fonzie jumping the shark where it's just shot from chest up and he's waving. And he still has a uh, sweater wrapped around his yes. neck. Oh, 100%. He's got the sweater <laughs> around his neck. That is not lead. never leaves. So... Uh, so we pan over to Jackhammer Dudley. So what type of scene would you like to set for Jackhammer Dudley? Would you like to set a connection scene with your connection? A work scene where you take a job for easy cash? A training scene? Uh, a training scene? A free play scene if you have something else in mind? Yeah, I think those are all of them. Because there's threat scenes, but I think those are special. Uh, let's see. I will do a work scene. Okay. Cool. Oh, with your connection, is there a role that you do with that? Uh, no. Um, work scenes cannot involve con another contender or one of their connections unless I explicitly agree, which you can totally use one of mine if you'd like. To determine the outcome of the job, the active player draws a number of card equal to his current pain. Red cards are successes. The forces of adversity oppose this pain check by drawing a number of cards equal to the amount of cash the contender is trying to earn from the work. If the contender wins the check, they get you get the cash. If it is tied, you have an ambivalent outcome, uh, at which point you gain some pain. If the contender loses the check, it goes badly. No cash is gained, but pain increases by one. So how much cash is Jack Hammer trying to earn? Uh, let's go with two. Okay. So, you will draw from the Roll20 deck two cards, and I will draw, I believe, the same. No. Oh, you're going to draw cards equal to your current pain, which is one. Oh, mine's two. Oh, then you're going to draw two cards. I'm going to draw two, ca two cards as well. I got one red card. Uh, I also got one red card, so let's play out this scene where you get... Uh, a point of pain, some cash, and you can dictate what work you're doing in the weeks before this big fight that you and I have scheduled that gets you hurt a little bit. So, trying to get the most out of their money, they will sometimes have Jack go visit some late 
debtors. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. So Jack is tasked with finding a person and shaking them down. Cool, cool, cool. So do you want to play out the shaking down of a thing? Because I have a neat idea for for that, for a debtor reaction. All right. So set the scene for us real quick. Describe, like, the debtor that you're coming to visit. So I get the feeling that this debtor is someone who has been trying to make everything back that they've lost in one fell swoop. They know that they are down, and so they are either going to a bar to try to forget or just getting out of a bar because they're trying to forget. Yeah, so I think that... I think they're just leaving the bar. I think it is... The guy's name is Larry Guile. He is strolling out of the bar when Jack confronts him. What, is, what does Jack say to him when, he, when, he, when, he, when the confrontation happens? Uh, so the first thing he does, he makes sure he has the right guy. Uh, he probably got a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a black and white, cr- probably crumpled up photo. And he will go settle up right beside him as he's walking, try to grab a handful of the back of the guy's shirt to keep him from running. He does that. He tenses up a little bit like he tries to run. He feels that and he like slumps a little bit. He knows that he's been caught. He knows that he's going to get hurt. And uh, when he slumps, Jack gets a little annoyed because he thinks he's going to dead weight and be childish about it. So he kind of lifts him up bodily, uh, partly to show off his strength and to try to put a little more fear into Larry. I I think that's exactly what happens. Uh, Larry freaks out a little bit, starts to kick, and then kind of, I think Jack, like he catches Jack out of the corner of his eye. And he says, wait a second, I I know you. You're, you're Hammer, right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, you're Larry? Yeah, 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 I'm Larry. I, look, I think we both know where this is going to go, but can I just say one thing before it goes there? Is that, is that all right? Just make it quick. You're great. Like, I've seen, I saw your last couple matches, and they are, you're great. I mean, I'm probably, I'm not rooting as much for you now because I think that you're about to kick my ass, but uh, I'm de- I, I was definitely, I'm still definitely rooting for you a little bit. I want you to teach that, that New York kid a thing or two, you know? You, you really mean that? Yeah, I, I yeah, I think that, like, the way that you beat down the assassin... I, I, th- I thought he was dead. I thought you were going to kill him in the ring. It was the coolest fight I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, I got a little carried away. That's, no, uh, it's great. That's like that's what I'm going. That's what we're going to boxing to see, though, right? Like, as people get carried away, as people feel in passion, right? Oh, it's so cool. So listen, listen. I, I know what's about to happen. I just wanted to say that, and I want you to know that. This is nothing personal. And he throws a haymaker right at your jaw. And it hurts. Not as much as not as much as if he were like a trained fighter, but it hurts. Yeah. Uh he has to spit some blood out. Cut uh, the inside of his mouth on one of his teeth. And I think there's a momentary pause where Larry is just like, Yeah, I punched the jackhammer. <laughs> It's like, you know, I I was going to take it easy because you said some real nice things. And then you did some not so nice things. So <laughs> this wasn't personal. And he kinda he nods. I think the last thing we see in the scene is he kinda nods before the fist comes at him. He's like, Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and then that's like the flash at the end of the scene. <laughs> and from then on, Larry tells the story of that time he got in one good punch. Ah, uh, that scene made me really happy. I like that scene a lot. I like to uh, imagine that maybe Jack spends a little of his own money and Larry gets a ticket when he gets home. 
because you know jack's jack's not very happy that he got punched but he can't help but like the idea of having a fan yeah right it's a begrudging respect yeah and who knows maybe larry will be smart and he'll sell the ticket for money maybe but probably not larry doesn't seem like the brightest bulb Larry uses the rest of his cash to buy hot dogs when he's at the match. This is true. <laughs> so uh, I think the next thing that I want to do is I want to have tra- a training scene, since I think we both have cash to at least raise one of our abilities. I think now we segue into um, the Rocky montages, as is traditional in a boxing narrative. Because I want to spend some cash to raise up my power by one. So I'm going to spend one cash... Raise up my power by one. And I want to run on the beach with Carl Weathers. I think we all want to run on the beach with Carl Weathers. Like, I think that's just the dream at this point. We all want to run on the beach with him and then do one of the uh, fist clinches from Predator. And then go home and make a stoop. I actually don't want to run on the beach with Carl Weathers. You know what I want to do? I want to run through a snowy field with Shane McMahon chasing a chicken. (laughs) Okay, that's also a pretty good use of a wish. I think that's I think that's my dream. Is get, you get that chicken. You get that chicken. Anyway, segueing back to the game. <laughs> so the training scene for um for th- for the throwback is he's got like a trainer who's got uh, a ken one of like a kendo stick and it's real almost like collegiate hazing hazing like. Where it's like he's like hitting him with the stick and he's doing Hindu squats and he's getting his legs hit. And he's like boxing, but like if his posture's not wrong, he gets like hit. Does the the handguard has fraternity letters on it? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it definitely does. This is definitely like an old fraternity tradition. And we're seeing like a lot of that where it's like you see him improving but, like, you also see his face is like, this is miserable. And he would rather not be, like, training this hard and this sort of, and, like, sacrificing this much. Like, in his, in his, in his perfect world, he wouldn't be, like, getting hit with a kendo stick. That wouldn't be his training. But now that the yacht is on the line, like, he's got to commit to the old ways. Now, question. It says... Training scenes are pretty straightforward. The player sets the scene, spends cash equal to the in-ring trait they want to improve, and then the appropriate trait improves by one. Yes. So do you spend one cash per any trait, or do you Um, have to spend, like, five cash to take a four to a five? uh, It's that. It's the latter, because I have increased my power from one to two, so I'm spending one cash to send it up to two. Okay. This is this also mechanically explains what the work like the purpose of the work scenes is to build up cash to spend in training scenes. Now the game is now making the game everything is now clicking in a, in an exciting way. So I am going to spend one cash, and we actually just did my training scene. Uh, Jack is going to be a lot more careful now, and so he increases his cover from one to two. Perfect. So I think that we can, oh god, I can perfectly see it now. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So we get a back and forth montage, right? Of like, the real professional, like, he's in like, uh, Hubert's in a ring when there's like a white circle around it. And he's like dancing, he's shadow boxing, and a guy's like hitting him in the leg when he doesn't, when he doesn't get his footwork exactly right. And we cut back and Jackhammer is just punching this dude in the street and then we cut back and it's him like doing the punching bag like boom 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 and he cut back and Jack is still punching (laughs) there's a debtor who is handcuffed to a meat hook and (laughs) he's punching his ribs (laughs) yeah we get a bat we get like a butt to like a really nice leather punching bag and he's doing that and we cut back to the meat hook and jack is doing the same poses as we and there's just a guy being like stop it please (laughs) oh man i don't think either of us are good people and i'm really excited about that (laughs) jack does some lung training by having a really smooth cigarette yep strengthens the lungs good for you it's the 30s. I can, it's the 30s. I can say that. Gotta have a fine coating of tar. 
keeps yes. the irritants out. And it's, you know, the body is basically a motor, so I don't see why oil and tar isn't good for it. Tar makes roads work better, right? Yeah. So, uh, the final type of scene before we have our big fight are promotion scenes. We've already established that the, uh, the match is happening, so we don't need to book the match, but we can sort of negotiate the stuff with the people that are running it. This would actually be a good time to bring in, like, mob people. So, uh, promotion scenes always precede a fight. During promotion scene, a contender meets up with boxing promoters and gets themselves booked in a match. Their opponent must also appear in the scene and can either be another PC contender or an NPC boxer. So this is... This is the press conference that we are, that you and I are having before, uh, our big fight. The weigh-in? Yes, the weigh-in, thank you. This is our weigh-in. This is the first time we're actually meeting face to face. Um, this is where we will negotiate the fight purse. We will also uh, the purse will be half the number of rounds scheduled, with majority going to the victor. We already said that there's a amount of money, so I'm going to gloss over that. Okay. I think Jack might be feeling a little annoyed right now because right. he's gotten some advice on the fight from one of the higher ups in the family. Okay. And he didn't like what he was told to do. Ooh, oh, oh, I don't like that. I'm worried about that. So, let's let's play out the first meeting of Jack Dudley and Hubert Styles. So, I think that uh the way in is is about to start. Like the the press questions and actual way in is about to start and we have sort of met backstage for the first time. I think Hubert is very energetic and goes up and offers like a real sort of awkwardly formal handshake like his other hand is behind his back <laughs> type deal is Dudley I take it charmed I'm sure Hubert and he goes to shake his hand and uh, he tries not to laugh because it's possibly the softest hand he's ever felt it is it is intensely moisturized. Some real cutting edge, like, I don't know, what do I know what they used in the 30s? Whale oil. There's a lot of whale oil on his hands. When he squeezes the hand, there's an audible squick sound. Mm, sorry about that. I just, I, I needed to, I tell you I had a callus on my knuckle. Too much of this pugilist training, am I right? And he kind of nudges, nudges him in the ribs. And uh, Jack's annoyed and tries to rub it off on a nearby towel and he's like yeah the calluses are there so it hurts less yes but you know then i've got to feel them during the week and i don't want that anyway i just i wanted to stop by and say uh good luck i i wish you the best i wish us both the finest of performances and may the better man win yeah i uh just want to let you know this isn't personal of course not i don't see why it would be per oh it's like that, then. Yeah, it's like that. Your family owes a lot of money. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm quite aware of that, but uh, I'd rather hope that we would keep that out of the, the ring, but if it has to be like that, then uh, um, I want you to know that it is it is personal. No, it, it is personal, then. Uh, good. Uh, you know, I don't want to do what I'm about to do, somebody to uh, somebody who doesn't take it to heart. Mm. Well, then suffice it to say that whatever we intend to do in the ring, we do with all of our gusto and all of our spirit. And he kind of, like, squints his eyes a little bit and, like, starts, like, working his wrists a little bit. And uh, Jack goes to get a cigarette. Says, uh, here you're uh, having Christmas out on a yacht. We sure, we certainly will be. And I, I trust wherever you have Christmas, it will be lovely. Well, at least for your family and next of kin. Then he uh, kind of says to himself, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be on a yacht too. Hmm. We'll see. Chum. I am not your chum, and he, like, backs out of the room. (laughs) 
he thinks he sounds very tough. And uh, meanwhile, there's a couple of handprints from uh, Uber pushing him. Just two moist handprints on his <laughs> robe. Yep. So, uh, the weigh-in happens. It is established that the winner is going to get two thousand dollars. Loser gets two hundred. We'll say five rounds, best of five. Sounds good. And um, I think under his breath, it's like best of five, and under his breath, Hubert's like, it won't last five rounds. But maybe he says it a little too loud. Jack just nods. And uh, these two are just going to be an opening bout for a main event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is nowhere near the main event. But um, yeah, so the the actual the way it happens and uh, almost disqualifies the fight from happening because I think Jack is much larger than Hubert, mm-hmm. and like almost <laughs> gets like knocked out of the uh, the weight class. Yeah, you know, back in those days. There, there's a, there's definitely a thought. Mm, mm, mm. No, I've got it. I know what happens. Go ahead. Hubert shouldn't qualify, but uh, the weigh-in official is crooked and basically essentially puts a thumb on the scale to be like, "Yep, class is up. He's a heavyweight." <laughs> Sounds good. But he is blissfully unaware of this. <laughs> he's a man with two hands. That means he's got a chance. Yes. And with that, we dive into our fight scene. The big match. Entering first. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the crowd cheers like, woo! Jack the Hammer Dudley! And his opponent, boo! Asshole. From New York City, boo! The throwback, boo, Hubert Styles, and Hubert comes out and does a little dance. He's like bobbing and weaving on his way out, waving to the crowd as they throw trash at him. <laughs> He's from New York and it's Philly. Yeah, it's few, blowing kisses. A few pennies get thrown. <laughs> you moist bastard. <laughs> oh man, it's Philly. They'll throw anything. They will throw anything. Don't give them beer bottles. This is true. You're not going to be given beer bottles. Okay. So fight scenes. So we've got five rounds. The fight begins. They ring the bell. Uh, and the way that fight scenes work. At the beginning of a match, each player control a boxer draws four of a kind. We've already done this. Uh, we are going to, at the start of each round, we're going to choose a tactic, select a card, and then reveal our choices simultaneously. The four tactical options are puncher's choice, which is aggressive, focusing on da- dealing damage. There's working off the jab, which is a balanced move. It, it balances both domination and damage. Bobbing and weaving, keeping your opponent on the ropes, emphasizes domination over damage. It's likely to hit, but not likely to deal a lot of damage. And then there's street style, which is dirty tactics. Powerful in both domination and damage, but can get you disqualified. So... As we go into our first round, choose which of the four categories Jack Hammer relies on in this round. Now, can I flip this over before I put it in? I believe we're just uh, let's just, we'll both just click and drag and drop them onto the onto the mat. Okay. I am ready. Ready. So I have tr- I have played the ten of clubs, which is street style. I am playing dirty. Where on earth did you learn how to play dirty? What Jack said got to me, and I figured I'm going to take it to take it to Jack the way that I think he's going to take it to me. And uh, Jack learned from Larry. He is not going to underestimate his opponent just because he looks so weak. And so he is going to start off defensive and see what his opponent has. So. The way this works, after tactics are revealed, a domination check is made to see who gets the better of the round. Each player will draw a number of cards equal to the dominate score of their chosen tactic plus their current technique score. Uh, my, dom- my technique is four and my dominate is four, so I'm going to draw eight cards. 
And my style is Dominate 5, and I only have Technique of 1, so I will draw 6. I can do math. Uh, red cards count as successes. If one boxer scores more successes than the other, then they dominate the round and do damage to their opponent. If the domination check is tied, the dominance is shared, and both get to make a damage check. So I have four red cards. So I have four successes. I also have four red cards. Ooh, we both get to make a damage check. So, a dominant fighter then makes a damage check by drawing a number of cards equal to their chosen tactic's damage rating, plus their current power score. My power is two, and my domination or my damage is also four, so I am drawing six cards. And my damage is one, and my power is four, so I will draw five. I got three successes. I also got three. Now, um, opponent can defend against damage by drawing a number of cards equal to their current cover score. So in addition to that, I'm now going to draw three more cards. So we each deal three damage, but we may absorb a certain number of damage based on our cover. So I'm now going to draw three more cards. I, I, I successfully block one damage. I take two damage. So apparently this is just a mirror match, because I also blocked one damage. Hmm. I like this. I'm digging. Th this is a good first round. And then we count up our success. We count up our total successes on damage, and that'll tell us where we where we advance within the round. With each of us dealing two damage, we each gain a marginal advantage over the other and gain one victory. So, uh, na narrate the round. The round is narrated by whichever fighters drew the highest card at any point. Um, I. Did not keep track of who drew the higher card, so uh, uh, since we tied pretty much everything, I'm fine sharing narration. Okay, uh, question. Yes. What style, uh, in terms of right-handed or southpaw, is your character? I think that he is a... I think he's a right... I think he's right-handed. Okay. Uh, Jack will be the same. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so I didn't keep track of what the high card that I drew was, so we'll just share narration since we got the same. Um, so the question I'll ask you is, does Jack get caught playing dirty? Uh, does Hubert? All right, that's what I mean. Does Hubert get, <laughs> thank you. Does Hubert get caught playing dirty? So I think it starts off with, uh, him trying to make it look innocent. He will mm -hmm. occasionally go in for a jab and just catch Jack's toes with his own foot to try to pin him in one spot while he throws a punch. So right now it's just, oh, you know, he's getting used to the uh, distance and, mm -hmm. you know, the tangle of feet. It's a little natural. But uh, he, you know, he is going to have to watch that kind of thing in future rounds. Okay. So Hubert does not get caught. They're kind of brushing it aside initially, especially because he's the kind of guy that should know the rules. And so they're kind of like, or rather, he's the kind of guy that doesn't have a reputation for it, so they're not calling it yet. He uses the old style, uh, so he keeps his uh, lead foot out further than usual anyways. So it's just a clash of styles. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, I think other than that, I think that the round doesn't go particularly badly for either. I think it goes well for both of us. I think Jack gets a few real big hits in, and Hubert's able to pull off a few cheating moves. Yep, mostly finding their range, getting yeah. ready for the next few rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we break at the end of round one, there's the bell. Both opponents looking quite limber in the ring there. Hubert showing a little bit of uncertainty in his steps, he'll have to try to recover that. It's going to start to look suspicious after a while. Now, Jack put in a good round there. Uh, he worked the body nicely. A lot of people like going for the head, but the head can move around. The body stays in one spot. Work the body, and the hands will fall, and that's when you go to the head. We cut to the corner, and... We cut to the corner, and Hubert is, like, chuckling to himself, and his coach is like, What are you doing out there? You're not a cheater. 
You're not one of them. You're not dirty. You play it clean. Over in uh, over in Jack's corner, he's mostly silent. There's uh, he's got his normal ring men, but uh, there's somebody else there who looks newer. He's just reminding him about the fifth round. Mm. All right, so there's the bell. Round two begins. Choose your strategy. All right, I am ready. Ready. I've chosen to work off the jab. As have I. Excellent. Interesting, interesting. So, I am going to draw some... Uh, so, for take a, for working off the jab, my domination is three. No, actually, we did skip a step. We did skip a step, because we are supposed Fatigue. to be getting tired. That is correct. Thank you for that. We're so tired, we forgot. At the start of the second and subsequent rounds, each boxer subtracts one point from their conditioning trait. If your conditioning trait is zero, you subtract one from all other in-ring traits. My conditioning is two, so I am currently at one out of two conditioning. And mine is four, so now I am down to three. All right. So, in second round, we've both chosen to work off the jab. My technique is four. And work off the jab is three, so I will be drawing seven. I'm going to be drawing seven cards. And my technique is one, and it's a dominate of three, so I will draw four. All right. Two successes. I got two successes as well. My high card is a joker. Your high card is also a joker. There's magic in the air. We are. We are just absolutely mirroring each other, and I'm feeling like that's perfect for this fight. I'm loving it. Okay, so we both got two successes, correct? Correct. Yes, so then we're both going to deal damage again. Uh, work off the jab has a damage of three. My power is two, so I will be drawing five cards. And my power is four with a damage of three, so I'll draw seven. I got three successes. <laughs> I got four. Oh, okay. So then you win the round. With one damage dealt, you get one victory point, which you, which uh, the other thing that we forgot from round one is as the winner, either of us can at any point choose to trade in a victory point to drop an opponent's trait by one. I would have held on to it anyways. Yeah, I definitely would have. It's too early in, it's too early in the fight. Okay, so now you try to absorb the damage. Yes. So I'm going to try to absorb the damage. I'm going to draw a number of cards equal to my cover, which is three. I absorbed two damage. And so that leaves me with two damage dealt. Great. So you take one victory point for my... Uh, you get one victory point in narration for the round. And so... Two victory points, I would use one of those to reduce your cover by one. Okay. My cover is now two. So how does the round go, Jack? So the round goes at the Clash of Colors, is what they're calling it. The white collar prince versus the blue collar man. Jack has come out stronger this round. He's taken to the body once again. Hubert can't keep his hands up. And he gets a couple of good knocks to the head as Jack rattles him. He manages to stay on his feet, though. There's significant swelling underneath Hubert's eye now, and Jack is looking pretty confident with himself. This round brought to you by RCA Victor. <laughs> so we cut back to the corner. Hubert is pretty beaten up. He's, he's, he's breathing heavy. And his coach just cold slaps him in the face. Cold slaps him in the face. And Hubert goes, what did, you, what, did you do, what did you do that for? Keep your hands up. If you kept your hands up, you wouldn't get slapped in the face. That makes sense. That's a fair point. Over in Jack's corner, the same guy's leaning in, saying, you know, doing this now is just going to make it harder later. 
There we go. Here's the bell for round three. Opponents step into the center of the ring. They prepare to square off. <laughs> oh, let me take some fatigue first. Yes, we should both take our fatigue. I am now at ze- I am now at zero conditioning. In future rounds, my stats will start to drop. So choose which style you want to approach the round on. All right. I am ready. Hubert has gone dirty once more. He is angry and he is he is fired up and he is not oh he's not following the rules that he claims to hold so sacred. And Jack is minding what the person said, so he's choosing to go a little more defensive and stretch out the fight. So I am gonna draw six cards as uh Dirty Tactics has a domination of four and I have a a technique of four. I'm drawing eight cards. Excuse me. I'm drawing eight cards because I have a technique of four and a domination of four. And with a domination of five and a technique of one, I will be drawing six. And Jack's game plan backfires. Meanwhile, Hubert's goes very well because I drew seven successes. <laughs> I drew zero successes. Whew. So, uh, with a damage of four and power of two, I'm going to be drawing six cards to deal damage. And I will draw a meager two. I deal two damage. Mm -hmm. You do indeed deal two damage. Jack thought he would take it easy on the little twerp, and he got a little too cocky. I think uh, what happens is the bell rings and Hubert just goes wild and is throwing punches that like he's like throwing above the belt. He's throwing below the belt like he is just the ref has to like kind of pull him back a little bit because like he just goes crazy. And because he's going crazy and not minding the ref, the ref is going to give him a warning. Yes, the ref gives him a warning. He's like, hey, hey, play by the rules. This is a civilized sport. What I say, you must obey. So he takes a step, so he sort of, like, pulls back a little bit. Not all the way, he pulls back a little bit, but is still just going wild. And that early round of, like, cheating and cheap shots is enough to, is enough to, like, put Jack on the defensive in a way that doesn't benefit his style. And Hubert's able to get some real nice body shots, and one clean shot on the exact same spot of the jaw where Larry punched him earlier. I don't know what hurts more, his pride or his jaw. So at two damage, I'm going to get one victory point, and I'm going to drop down your your power is four, right? Correct. Yeah, I'm going to drop down your power to three, and I'm going to hold that one victory point. It goes back to the corner. Uh, The coach gives him a real stern look. And he's like, Hubert, you do you. And Hubert gets a shit-eating grin on his face. And over in Jack's corner, he's seething. The guy says, hey, that almost looked convincing. <laughs> oh. All right. I'm now at a conditioning of one. I'm at uh, conditioning zero, so everything else drops to one. My power drops to one, my cover drops to one, and my technique drops to three. So, what a round, what a round! Hubert, the throwback seems real fired up in that one. You know, I wasn't looking to uh, see this kind of fight from that kid, but he actually had Jack on the ropes and uh, looked like his legs were wanting to give out a couple of those hits. We'll have to see how the rest of the fight shakes out. If he can keep that fire in him, he might have it won. There's the bell. Round four begins. You don't need to be the best boxer, you just have to get the best hit in. So, we've applied our fatigue, we've applied, we've brought, uh, we now choose our style for the fourth round. This is round four. I am ready when you are. I am ready. Hubert has chosen to bob and weave. Now that he's got, now that he's put him on the ropes a few times, he's trying to lean back and make sure that he keeps control of the round. He doesn't want to get hit, because he knows if he gets hit, it's going to hurt. And Jack is not really thinking too straight, and so he wants to give Hubert a taste of his own medicine. 
you know, maybe go into a clinch and give him a few rabbit punches to the back mm. of the head. Mm-hmm. That's good stuff. So, um, Bob and Weave has a dominate of five, and I have a technique of three, so I will be drawing eight cards. And with Street Style having a dominate of four and a technique of one for Jack, I will draw five. I got five successes. Oh, I only got four. Ha, it works. So I'm going to go for damage. My damage is unfortunately very low. Fortunately for Jack, uh, my damage is one and my power is also one. So I am only drawing two cards. And I will be drawing a cover of two. I got no successes. Well, that's good because I got two successes. Well done. So the fourth round is very slow. Fourth round, the crowd gets a little restless as they are just clinching and dancing. Yep. Yep, yep. Jack does not get caught. Or rather, if he does, the ref looks the other way. Um, I think that what happens is both opponents are like, um, yeah, we're, because I'm trying to like keep, just like keep the advantage that I've got and you're trying to get through to the fifth round. So I think it's a very slow round. Yep. Uh, no momentum. As soon as one guy starts throwing punches, the other starts to clinch. Hebert is trying to get his wind back. Okay. So this is the fifth and final round. Woman brings out the sign that says, that says round five. How's Jack feeling and going into round five? At this point, Jack is seeing red. I think Hubert is desperate i think that tears are starting to well up i think that he knows that he's gotta he's gotta bust out everything he can do every time the guy in jack's corner leans in to say something you can just see jack get even more irritated yep 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 i think hubert the the coach is leaning in to talk to him to like lay out his real specific strategy but hubert's just ignoring it all he can hear is that phone call all he can hear is like, I gotta win it. I gotta win the yacht back because if I can win the yacht back, maybe the like there's some semblance. Maybe I can make my family proud of what I'm doing as a box. There's the bell at round five. Both opponents seem hesitant as they walk into the ring. They're not moving with quite the same energy they've had. So applying fatigue, I have zero points in power, cover, two points in technique. And I am down to zero conditioning. Okay, so we've applied fatigue. Now, uh, I'm going to declare two things going into this match. Go ahead. Uh, one, we come out. Uh, I'm gonna de- I'm gonna describe the second one. Then describe this one after we play our styles. But uh, the first thing I'm gonna describe is I am burning a point of hope. I am burning a point of hope to restore a point of power. What that means is I'm I'm permanently losing that one point of hope that I have. That's a, on the I'm banking on the idea that I win this fight and I get my family's yacht back. So I permanently burn a point of hope to restore a uh, trait to restore a uh, trait damage. So you damaged my was it conditioning? Or, never mind. Doesn't doesn't matter. Scrap all of this. I forget what damage I took, but it's not, it does not apply to fatigue, so it doesn't count here. Okay, so pick your fighting style. And uh, I'm going to announce that Jack is going to bring the pain. Hmm. Hubert is also bringing the pain, so this is good. It's very painful to watch. Yes. So, bringing the pain, the way that works. Uh, Let me read read what that, how that works. Once per match, each of us can bring a pain upon our opponent. We gain a number of cards to our domination check equal to our current pain scores. If we win domination, we also gain a number of cards equal to our damage, equal to our current pain, minus one. Pain begets pain. After bringing the pain, we both increase our pain by one point. So we we come into this round... Ah, I think it looks really cool. I think we come into this round, like, real slow, and there's just, like, a quiet energy, and the crowd kind of realizes, like, oh, this round is gonna be... this round is gonna be interesting. And we just start going to town. You... 
really see why Jack got the nickname Jackhammer. Yes. Not just because he used to use one on the job. And uh, I think Hubert, he comes out with this real old school, like, boxer's pose and just starts and, like, drops it and just starts swinging. So go ahead and choose your fighting style for the final round. He comes out in the boxing equivalent of the crane kick. Yeah. Hubert is working off the jab. He he is tired, he is angry, but he's doing everything he can to just throw as many punches as he can to hope to get that one solid hit. And Jack is going with puncher's choice. He uh, is not very much about technique at this point. He is about connecting leather to face. All right, I love it. So, with a dominate score of three... And a technique of two, I'm drawing five cards. And your bring the pain? Yes, I'm drawing six cards because I have one pain. So with a dominate of one, a technique of one, and a pain of three, I will draw five. I got three successes. I only got two. Whew. So, uh, with a power score of zero and a damage of three... Uh, and pain of zero, because my pain minus one is zero, I am drawing three cards to deal damage. And I will draw two for my cover. I got one success. And I got one block. Okay, well then, so, what was your, did you did you keep track of the high card that you drew? Because I drew a joker, so did you draw a joker? No, I did not. Okay, so then the way the fight ends is, we both bring everything to this final round, right? Uh, dis what I'm gonna say, describe to me the moment that it looks like Jack might almost win it. Uh, I would say that Jack is just going, you know, swinging haymakers left and right, and Hubert is having to cover up for a while mm -hmm. and not take an active role, and the ref looks like he is looking for an excuse to stop the fight. Mm-hmm. But then Hubert manages to duck out of the way against the ropes mm. and start throwing in some jabs. I and the guy in Jack's corner is looking not happy at all. Mm. I think that the moment that Hubert almost wins it is um, he gets a jab off on Jack's jaw. And he sees Jack momentarily almost imperceptibly to somebody that's not like a boxer touch his jaw a little bit and hubert's like oh shit he's got a bruise and just starts just spamming that jab button right at that one spot like it's a game of punch out and he's like i gotta get the i gotta hit it there that's the spot and he's just punching and punching and punching and eventually like it he starts like jack starts to get woozy and starts to like waver a little bit and then just gets one big haymaker and sends Hubert back. And uh, just before that's happening, when Jack's getting hit pretty hard, the guy in his corner is yelling, go down. It's kind of hard to tell exactly what he's talking about. But he's yelling, go down. Hmm. And uh, Jack gets a little rubber-legged, but... Uh, Manages to keep his feet and connect. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, the bell rings. Uh, the final round. Fight round five ends. We're pulled off. We, we, we are pulled off of one, e one another because we are not done fighting yet. Uh, so, what happens now is we count up our victory points, which I have won. Uh, I am also left with one. So, the fight's a draw. No one wins. We're pulled aside. The fight is announced to draw. Mixed response, I think. Ja Hubert gets a warmer response than he did. And the guy that was in Jack's corner makes his way to the back. Hmm. I think, um, so let's do real quick, uh, like, bullet point wrap-ups of everything. Because there's a lot of stuff that I want to touch on before we wrap up. Uh, I think Hubert and Jack meet in the locker room briefly before everything, like shortly after the fight. What's Jack's reaction? 
think Jack seems caught up in his own mind. Uh, he would offer a glove to Hubert when he enters in, uh, just as a show of respect. He certainly didn't expect Hubert to go the distance. And he's just looking a little distraught. Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, they bump gloves, and I think Hubert kind of silently grabs his stuff and, like, briefly looks back in Jack's direction and kind of nods a little bit. Jack doesn't notice, and Hubert just grabs his things and leaves, like, out the back. So, uh, neither, we, we got a draw, so they actually just ended up splitting the 2200 evenly. So, Hubert's got $1,100. He gets the, uh, it's enough to cover the payments on the yacht, but exactly enough to cover the payments on the yacht. So we get a brief shot of him, like, looking at the notes from Wooster and being like, <sighs> and he, like, puts it in an envelope, like, all of the winning. Maybe there's some of, some of it, like, the, the, the bills have a little bit of his blood on them, if we really want to make that metaphor legit. And he puts them all in, he puts them all in. And, like, quietly puts it in the mail. And I think in Jack's corner of the scene, he's still in the locker room, uh, still in his trunks. Uh, he's taking his gloves off at this point. He's just kind of rubbing his hands and the calluses. And, uh, you know, one of the guys comes back to offer him his cut of the purse and uh, he actually tells the guy to send it to Dan Masters uh, leaves a little note with them that says you know go back to the fresh air mm -hmm. you can't breathe here and he walks out of the back exit to the arena and there's a car waiting for him mm -hmm. and the door opens up he just takes a breath, says, you know, uh, never been on a yacht before, and walks inside. And the door slams, and that's game. Whew. The end. Wow. Dang, that ending, though. Oh, my gosh. They both Ugh. got a yacht ride. They both got a yacht ride. Ugh, I love it. That Dang, that game is a lot of fun. Hubert gets Christmas with the fishes, and Jack gets to sleep with the fishes. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful and heartbreaking. Ugh. De Moon Rolls, thank you for coming on Party of One. That was a blast. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me. It'd be interesting to try this with multiple boxers. Yeah, I, I feel like it plays real. I love the way it plays with two people. But I know that it, it supports more than that, and I'd love to see how you would run. I'd love to see how it works with a whole group of people, like, interspersing fights. That sounds really interesting. Or uh, setting up your own, like, little league with a ladder. Yeah. Oh, man, that's... <sighs> this game's cool. I like this game a lot. So, real quick, where can people find your work online? Well, if you head to audioentropy.com... Uh, I am one of many podcasts there. Inside the Master Studio is mine, but uh, give them all a listen. Yeah, they're all very, they're all good. They're all good people. I like them a lot. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. This was amazing. I'm gonna throw it over to me in the future so that he can wrap up with the show. Take a future me. Thanks, past me. And there you have it, sports fans. That one was one for the record books. You're going to be hearing stories of this one for a long time. That was a once-in-a-lifetime bout. Special thanks to the Moon Rules for coming by. <laughs> sports fans, be sure to check out Inside the Master Studio on the Audio Entropy Podcast Network. It's a doozy of a show, and I think you're going to love it. You can find that in a delightful hootenanny of other shows at audioentropy.com. Then once you've checked out Inside the Master Studio, turn your internet machine to www.twitter.com and follow the Moon Rules at... The Moon Rules. That's D-A-M-O-O-N-R-U-L-Z. You can also follow Party of One at Party of One Pod. Like the show on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Party of One Podcast. If you like the show, consider leaving us a five-star review on iTunes, or giving us a word-of-mouth recommendation, or a social media shout-out. We always appreciate the support. 
Trust me, you're a real peach, kid. If you want to hear more from the duet Kid Jeff Stormer, check out All My Fantasy Children, where he and Aaron Catano take your listener prompts and turn them into beautiful, thriving, vibrant role-playing game characters. Party of One is produced and edited by Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. Music for this episode comes from The Great One Step by the Victor Dance Orchestra. If you'd like to inquire about advertising rates or coming on the show yourself, shoot an email to partyofonepodcast at gmail.com. Well, that's it for us at the Party of One commentary booth. Until next time, thank you for listening, fight the forces of fascism every single day, and party on! Take it away, boys! Thank <laughs> you.